Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Hi and welcome to the final part of making an endless runner game without code. So in the previous tutorials, we saw how to make the player move, how to make the camera follow the player, how to make an endless ground, how to spawn obstacles, and how to increase the difficulty of the game as it progresses. Now the gameplay part of the game is completely done. Only thing that was left is the menu system and to tidy things up. So to start with, let's just rename the capsule as player. And let's rename the plane as ground. And let's rename plane one as ground one. Now our game starts as soon as we hit the play button. So when we build the game, the game will start immediately when the player opens the app. We don't want that to happen. There should be something like a start button. So once the player presses the start button, the game should start. So for that, let's create a new UI panel. So let's name it as start panel. And let's zoom in. Okay, I'm going to add a UI button to this button. And I'm going to name this as start button. So as soon as the player presses the start button, the game should start. But since the player is already present in the scene, as soon as the game starts, the player will start running. So let's just disable him. Now my game looks like this. So there's no player in the scene. As soon as the start button is pressed, the player will be spawned and he will start running. So let's also change the text and call it start. Now for the button click operation, we need to add another visual script. So let's go ahead and click on add component and go for a sprite machine. We need two variables. One is the player variable. The other is the start panel. The reason we need start panel is we need to disable the start panel as soon as the game starts. So the first will be my player variable. So it is of type game object. So let me drag and drop my disabled player onto it. The next is my start panel. So this is also of type game object and I'm going to set my start panel to it. Now let's create a new graph where the logic will reside and we'll call this as start logic. Let's save it. Now let's click on edit graph to edit the logic. We don't need the start and the update function. All we need is on button click. So on button click will be called whenever someone presses the UI button. So when the button is pressed, we need to set active. So game object set active. So the first object that we need to set active is the player. The value should be set to true. After that, we need to disable the panel. So we also need to use the set active node for that. So the only difference is we'll set the value to false. Okay, so the script is done. Let's go back, play the game. And let's hit on the start button, the game starts. And the player is moving, we are having obstacles. So the next thing that is pending is as soon as the player collides, we need another panel to pop up with a restart button. So let's just duplicate this. And let's call it restart panel and the button inside the restart will be called restart button the text also should say restart so we don't need the variables for the this graph so we'll create another new graph so let's remove this remove variable let's add another new script machine with no variables and the graph will be called as restart. So now we have a restart graph and all that we have to do on restart is using the on button click. We need to load the scene. 
So it will be load scene. So we need to know which scene to load. So we need to basically restart the current scene. So we'll get we'll use get scene, get active scene. Okay. So this should come first. And then we need to get the name of the scene so that we can feed it to load scene. So we'll say get name. Okay. So basically this will be the input, which is a scene. Then it will give the name, which we can connect to the load scene. So that's it for the script. So we'll disable the restart panel as of now. So only the start panel will be there. And when the game starts, the start panel will load. And when the player basically hits the collider and the player is destroyed, before the player is destroyed, the restart panel should be spawned. So let's go to our player graph and let's click on edit graph. So we are destroying the player here if the condition is true. So before destroying, we'll just use an add node and we'll just use set active. So we need to set the panel active. For that, we need to get the panel first. So let's go out. Let's add a new variable called restart panel. It's of type game object. Let's drag our restart panel here. Let's go back to edit graph and object. So restart panel will be here and let's connect it here and let's set it to active. So now before the player is destroyed, the restart panel will be set active and then the player will be destroyed. So let's go back to Unity and test our game. So I click on the start button, the player goes forward, obstacles are spawned and if I go and hit on the obstacle, the restart panel is coming up and if I click on the restart, then the game restarts and now I can start the game again. Now that we have the start and the restart panel, the next thing that is pending is the scoring system. So let's go ahead and add a text UI. So canvas UI text. Okay, so let's go to the scene. I want the text somewhere here on the top. And let's rename the text element as score. Now let's go to the player graph. So that will increase the score and add it to the text. Now we need to get the text element. So let's type in score as the variable. So the type of the score variable is tmpro, textmas pro ugui, then drag and drop the score to the textmas pro element. So now let's go to edit graph. So we need the start function. So we need to set the text to zero and the game starts. So for that we'll need a node. TM Pro, yeah, we'll search for set text. Okay, this will happen when the game starts and the value will be set to zero. So we need another graph variable. So let's call it score float. And it's of type float. The initial value is zero. So we'll take that and we'll add that with uh, another node which is time delta time okay it's getting a little crowded over here so let's move that here okay let's add it and then we'll set it to set variable so this is a graph variable the variable is score float now we need to convert this to string so we need a node called toString. Okay, it's float to string. So the value goes from here to here. And once you have that, you need to set the text variable. Okay, it's better to search for TM Pro. Then you go inside that and you go for set text. Okay, the value will come from this text 
and you need to set it to this. Okay, we have to do that for this one too in the start. Okay, so now our logic is complete. If made a mistake, it should be TM Pro UGUI. So there are two TM Pros, so make sure you select the right one. That should be set text. Okay, we have to do that in the update also. Search for TM Pro, TM Pro UGUI, and then search for set text. Yep. Now let's go back and see if the game's working. Okay, the score is coming up. But as you can see, the value is too big. So let's search to string with a format. And the format is 00. zero. Now you can see that the score is displayed as two digit. Rather than using just two string, we have used the two string format block. It will not display any decimal digits. So we'll only have the integers that will be displayed. So that's it. We have created a complete endless runner game without code. And I'll make this project available on h.io and the link will be there in the description. So you can just download this project, replace all the player, ground, and menu systems and make your own game. You can just rescan and have a game running. So if you like this tutorial and you want to see more templates like this without code, consider donating on h.io. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.